Good morning, everybody. Sorry for the noise behind me. Lots of people waking up and getting in their cars today. This morning, I'm sitting out in my garden, and I wanted to share a story with you called Mr. Carey's Garden. Mr. Carey's Garden is written by Jane Cutler and illustrated by G. Brian Karras. Down at the end of Blackberry Lane live four people who love their gardens. In some ways, the gardens are alike, but each garden has something remarkable about it. Something that makes it different from all others. Mr. Munson has watermelons, seedless watermelons, he says. Miss Elwood has a milk-fed pumpkin that's so big she can't lift it by herself. Mr. Feebold has sunflowers that stand taller than he does. And Mr. Carey has plants that are full of holes. Why do you think that is? Let's see. It snails, Mr. Munsing tells Mr. Carey. Do them the way I do. Creep out in the dark with a flashlight and a bag of salt. Pluck them off the plants and sprinkle them. They'll shrivel up to nothing and trouble you no more. Mr. Carey listens. I appreciate your suggestion, he says, but I see things in a different light. Later, Miss Elwood comes by. Snails, she says, do them the way I do. Get up at first light and gather your harvest of snails and put them in a plastic bag and stick them in your freezer. Frozen snails, they'll trouble you no more. That sounds awful. I appreciate your suggestion, Mr. Carey tells her, but I see things in a different light. He's being very polite, Mr. Carey, isn't he? Toward evening, Mr. Feebold walks by. Do them the way I do, Mr. Feebold says. Poison the pests, they'll trouble you no more. Mr. Carey studies the box of poison pellets. The thing is, he tells Mr. Feebold, I see things in a different light. The puzzled neighbors buzz. They don't understand what Mr. Carey means until one summer night. This summer night is warm and still and filled with the light of the full moon floating high in the sky and beaming down so enthusiastically that nobody at the end of Blackberry Lane can sleep a wink. Mr. Munsing brews himself a whole pot of sleep-tight tea and drinks it all. When that doesn't work, he puts on his plaid bathrobe and his carpet slippers and goes outside for a breath of air. Miss Elwood counts a thousand imaginary sheep jumping over an imaginary fence. When that doesn't help, she puts on her dressing gown and her scuffs and goes out for a midnight stroll. Mr. Feebold reads the telephone book backward. When that's no use, he puts on his wraparound and his flip-flops and decides to walk to the corner and back. Some of you might be asking, what is a telephone book? Ask your mommy. A soft, steady sound, the sound of nibbling and crunching, draws Mr. Munsing, Miss Elwood, and Mr. Feebold down to the end of the block. When they come to Mr. Carey's garden, they stop and they stare. What do you think they see? All right, let's look. They stare at stately snails crisscrossing Mr. Carey's garden at their glistening trails that shine like silver ribbons in the moonlight. You see those silver ribbons? Aren't they beautiful? 
They stare at the broad gravel leaves of the plants growing lacy shadows on the ground. And they stare at Mr. Carey sitting on his porch and looking with pleasure at the magical place his garden has become. Now, whenever the night is warm and still and the moon is high and full, the people who live down at the end of Blackberry Lane come to sit with Mr. Carey on his porch and watch the snails glide back and forth in the moonlight. Now they see the garden in a different light. <laughs> the same as Mr. Carey does. I love this story. You know, it's very similar to people thinking that dandelions are weeds. Many people think that snails are pests. And we can all have our opinions about things and see things differently, and that's okay. I happen to love snails, and I know that I've got a lot of them hiding way down here in these flowers. But I don't mind. I don't mind at all. All right, you guys, have a super day, and I will see you soon. Take some time to sit out in your garden today.